Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the double alkylation of alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm just going to start with something fairly simple. You know, maybe we have this alpha beta unsaturated compound. And in a previous video, I shared that uh, Gilman reagents, these lithium dialkyl cuprates, will alkylate, excuse me, alkylate these things at the beta position because they are, are a softer nucleophile. Uh, and initially, uh, this mechanism leads to the enolate anion. And when I talked about this, when I did my first video on this microaddition process, you know, we just treated the thing with acid and moved on. But we know that enolate anions are nucleophiles. Uh, and so it will this, you know, this enolate intermediate can actually do other things if we give it a chance. And so if we provide it with an electrophile that we know enolates react with, and it doesn't actually even need to be an alkyl halide, but it, we're going to use an alkyl halide. And I'm using this R prime here to signify that the two things are different. And then these can be different R groups. We can get double alkylation where we ended up putting two uh, two group R groups onto the same uh, molecule through a, through what would probably happen in one reaction vessel I would you can't isolate this intermediate so you know if we were given uh, a situation where we wanted to say oh I don't know, make this compound from an alpha beta unsaturated compound. You know, if we look at breaking the carbon carbon bond at the alpha position, or we look at making the carbon carbon bond at the alpha position and the other one at the beta position, the piece that's at the uh, alpha position will come from an alkyl halide. The piece that's at the beta position will come from a cuprate, and the other piece will be a alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. So this this reaction will occur using lithium dimethyl cuprate, uh, phenyl vinyl ether and bromoethane as the three different pieces. I have one last little tidbit to tell you about this reaction, and that is if it occurs on a cyclic molecule, there's actually a, a, an expected stereochemical outcome. So like, let's say I'm using lithium diethyl cuprate as my cuprate nucleophile, and then we're going to react that with propyl chloride as my carbon electrophile. Uh, and, and here, you know, I'm just going to draw first the, the product without any stereochemistry. Right, here you sense the ethyl group is beta. This ends up beta. The, the electrophile ends up alpha. There are actually several different stereoisomers that could happen here, and it turns out that the stereochemical arrangement that's preferred uh, because of the ring structure is trans. And since this molecule was chiral uh, and the cyclohexenone was not, uh, this reaction forms the enantiomer as well. So you get the racemic mixture. 
It is possible that if there were chirality centers somewhere else in the structures, you might be able to get some enantioselectivity, but at least this reaction is diastereoselective. Okay? So this concludes my uh, video on this di double alkylation reaction. Thank you for watching.